Uh, we're going to start the afternoon with uh, with the Headwaters Innovation Prize. So we're excited uh, about this. And if if I could uh, ask Jonathan Shapira, um, and, and and is Erdine coming up as well? And uh, Erdine Beshamov, if you guys could come up. Uh, really, the Headwaters Innovation Prize uh, is the uh, brainchild of uh, Jonathan and Erdine. Uh, it's been their leadership that's gotten this done, and I'm excited for them to chat with you about what the Headwaters Innovation Prize is. Thanks so much, Roll. Hi, everyone. My name is Jonathan Shapira, uh, and my colleague, Erdine Beshamov. We're here to present the Headwaters Innovation Prize, and we're going to turn it over very quickly to the three finalists. Just a recap, um, if you hadn't already seen it, sort of in the invitation on the website, the Headwaters Innovation Prize is a new business plan competition. We started at this year's symposium. It's a competition for early stage water innovation companies and, and really ideas that are just now emerging out of Massachusetts area uh, universities and colleges. Uh, we received a lot of applications and we've narrowed the, uh, the applications down to three finalists who you're gonna hear from shortly. Uh, each team will have five minutes to present. The winning team today is gonna receive a, a $2,500 cash prize underwritten by Northeastern University, $5,000 in legal services from Goodwin Proctor to help with incorporation and, and founder issues and one-on-one -on -one mentor time with senior water industry executives and investors, including uh, partners from Flagship Ventures, Liberation Capital, Xylem, and other companies. Um, the winner is going to be selected by you, the audience, following the presentations, and I'll turn it over to Erdine to explain how that's going to work. Thanks, Jonathan. In the water sector, it often feels so much is outside of your control. We're going to change that today. You will choose the winner of the Headwaters Innovation Prize. On your tables, you will see the following instructions. You will be able to vote in three ways by SMS. Uh, there is a number on the handout where you need to text and uh, what uh, keyword for the team that you choose. You can do it on Twitter, tweeting the name of the team, at Paul, or online there is a link as well. So thank you so much. Please do vote. Uh, we really want you to participate. And good luck to the teams. The first presenter is Crowd.io. Crowd.io. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jose Gomez Marquez, representing Crowd.io. Crowd.io is trying to uh, develop a platform that will democratize the way water quality is measured using distributed, affordable, real-time water quality sensors that any citizen can use to report water quality with their mobile phone. The impact of water quality is enormous. Um, you guys are the experts, really. I don't have to tell you how important it is and has become to improving public health. More than three and a half million people around the world die directly from waterborne diseases. And in America, uh, at least 1.2 trillion gallons of untreated sewage uh, and other uh, contaminated water makes it into the water quality, that, the, the, the water that we consume. So we need to do something about this. So testing has, has become a state-of-the-art business. Um, and we've, we've progressed enormously in, in the way that we test our, our own water. Um, we spend more than three and a half billion uh, dollars a year on, on water testing. Most of it is centralized by both contractors and government agencies. Um, and the water quality reports are cyclical. They're not necessarily done in real time. And there's a gap. Um, when we look at water quality, when you looked at the last time we read a report on water quality, you'll notice that it wasn't something that you read as, as as frequently as the weather report this morning to find out if it was going to rain or the, or the report next weekend if, if you're going to go take a picnic out in a, in a lake. There's no real graphical representation that's easily available for water quality. And even though we have high resolution maps thanks to volunteers, sometimes the overhead and managerial expenses to run these types of programs becomes very demanding. So we introduced Crowdio. Crowdio is an app that has HTML5 uh, image recognition uh, enabled uh, technology to work with companion diagnostics that we call Crowdio water sensors, essentially a hardware API 
for water quality diagnostics that works not just with the water quality diagnostics that we make, but an enormous platform of other diagnostics that are readily off the shelf. So we take the app, we distribute it, we distribute the, the cheap water sensors based on microfluidic microfluidic technology developed at MIT, and then we create an aggregated network of citizen sensors around the world. We've begun to do this already in cities like Berlin, Christchurch, uh, Managua, Nicaragua, and the outskirts of, of Nicaragua, and Panama, as well as in Cambridge and places along the way like Miami. Um, but we're trying to do something that is uh, uh, now closer to home. We have a lot of fun traveling around the world developing water quality maps, and we're now trying to do this um, starting with the state of Massachusetts and go beyond uh, chemical sensors such as pH and the traditional water hardness and quality tests and then look at other types of targets such as uh, bacterial contaminants that need incubation and virology tests. Um, we then will uh, create incentive schemes because even though citizen scientists like to develop reports, we need to go beyond what their own public benefit wants are and create private benefit incentives such as uh, rewards cards and Amazon gift cards and that sort of thing. So finally we can partner with an enterprise that wants to look at this data exhaust and create a, an app that provides a product. The opportunity is, is big. We have several verticals along whether it's streams or pools or uh, downstream industrial waste. Um, and the landscape has some players and largely is divided among players that work with their own diagnostics and other players that look at uh, lots of distribution points but they're not necessarily mapped and they don't provide what we call ground truth diagnostics which is what we create. Um, the team is well established in both lab on a chip design at MIT and in the international research endeavors uh, around the world as well as product design from the mechanical engineering department. Um, over the next few months, we want to create a thousand tests. Uh, we want to validate our app using um, cross-platform technology so it, doesn't, it won't just work on an iPhone or an expensive phone. And we really want to forge a relationship with you because you have the, the access to these waterways and um, the institutional partnerships that can make us grow and relevant. Um, we're looking to raise an initial seed round of $300,000 that'll, that'll bolster our uh, software development capabilities and expand our target, our targets towards uh, bacteriological um, uh, detection. Long term, over the next 18 months, we want to create a multi-platform diagnostic that can frankly make the, the vision of opening your newspaper or your app or anything uh, related to water quality diagnostics as frequent as a weather map for water quality. Thank you. And they should actually all be. Tim Drinkwell. This is arsenic poisoning. Mic check. Mic check. You can't see it and you can't smell it. But two to three years after drinking this, Mic check. not only Mic will your hands look like Mic that, five. but Mic you'll get check. arsenicosis, yeah. an incurable cancer-causing disease. The biggest tragedy is that despite millions of dollars being spent, over 177 million people in Bangladesh and India alone still suffer from drinking arsenic contaminated water. And the World Health Organization calls this the largest mass poisoning in human history. In Bangladesh alone, one in five deaths occur due to arsenic. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to introduce you to a revolutionary new company that is transforming this global water crisis into economic opportunity. Introducing Drinkwell. Put simply, we deliver clean water to those who need it most by using cutting edge technology with a micro franchise business model. The way we work is simple. We first remove arsenic, iron, fluoride from contaminated tube balls and then dispense it into 20 liter jugs that are then delivered to households at a low price of a half penny a liter. Our underlying magic is the fact that we have configurable technology that's actually modularized to meet the needs of our local communities. This means we actually use regenerable media. So when we remove all of these contaminants, we can actually regenerate the media at the end of every six months, giving us a sustainable value chain. So who's behind this? 
First, we have Dr. Rup Gupta, the inventor of the system and a renowned international groundwater expert. Next, you have myself, Minhaj Chowdhury. I have five years experience managing water projects with Johns Hopkins and BRAC. Next, you have Mike German. He's actually on a Fulbright in India right now, operationalizing our projects uh, in resource-constrained environments. And finally, you have Nick Swellio, who has significant uh, legal and financial expertise in the social enterprise space. And he's also finishing up his law degree at Boston College Law School. Collectively, we've done three Fulbrights, and we have over 25 years of experience in the water space. And actually, through Sengupta's foundation, the Tugur Sengupta Foundation, we actually have over 200 operational plants across India, Laos, and Cambodia. In India alone, we're delivering 16.2 million liters of drinking water. And this has gone over so well that we've won countless awards from the private sector, uh, such as the Hilton Foundation, the Lucent Foundation, from industry experts like the EPA, NSF. And in November, we won the Intel Tech Environment Award, proving that what we're doing is actually sustainable from a business perspective. So why are we here? We actually want to scale and build on this traction to leverage private investment capital to address the 48 million villagers in Bangladesh and India that are forced to drink arsenic contaminated water. And that's Drinkwell. And so we plan on attacking this market through our four-stage business model. The first step is select, where we engage with local stakeholders to select an entrepreneur. And that female entrepreneur then actually goes ahead and hires two drivers and a caretaker. The next step is build, where it costs $8,000 to build a plant which will take a month. And then it's the best part. It's where the entrepreneur uses their social capital to sell the water. And this has gone over so well that entrepreneurs actually use the revenues to buy a car to actually meet their growing demand. And finally, we collect two data points. First is from the villagers. A water scorecard is used to collect uh, data from their demographics. And then finally, a water sensor is used uh, to basically track leaders' dispense to guard against uh, untruthful reporting and dishonesty from the entrepreneurs. So we're really different from our competitors in three unique ways. First, we're 60 times cheaper than bottled water. Second, our existing uh, competitors use reverse osmosis. And as you guys probably know, it's very wasteful. 40 to 60% of water is wasted in that process. We only waste 1%. And then finally, our business model is, com is replicated by others, but they can't filtrate arsenic at a cost-effective manner. And that's what we do, and we've done it so well, we've gained a lot of traction. This is a high-level overview of our economics. We basically charge $3, so each plant can currently serve 600 households, and that's $1,800 in revenue. So we can translate that into $1,000 in gross profit. We give 150 to an entrepreneur. That's three times the average income of a rural Indian or Bangladeshi. And the remaining 850 is used to grow the business. So we're seeking $300,000 in seed funding, of which 130 will go towards capital costs for opening six plants by the end of this year. 70,000 to have a mobile management system where we can remotely manage a plant. And then finally, $100,000 to really change the conversation about how we market water and using celebrities to endorse our water, showing that even the privileged love our water. In closing, we have a strategic opportunity here to transform millions of lives. We're Drinkwell. Join us as we transform the global water crisis into economic opportunity. This is team nanomembranes. Thanks, sir, Dean. Can just open it. Control. Oh. How's everybody doing? Okay, we're good. Nanomembranes is a research team at MIT that's designing new membranes based on graphene that are going to be a game changer in the world of water desalination. My name is David Cohen-Tanucci. This is Shreya Deve. And together with our advisor at MIT, Professor Jeff Grossman, we're designing a game-changing platform. Let me tell you about it real quick. The ability and viability of reverse osmosis desalination as a solution to water problems worldwide is going to be inherently limited by the performance and the technology behind the membranes that separate the salt from the water. Unfortunately, the polymer membranes that are still in use today haven't evolved very much in design since the 1970s. I'm sure you can imagine uh, what the telecoms industry would look like if cell phones hadn't evolved since the 1970s. Um, what this means in practice is that uh, membranes require a lot of pressure to get water through, to get not a lot of water through, you could say, um, which results in large plants. Large plants mean high capital costs, uh, as well as higher than necessary energy costs for the desalination process. 
This is where we come in. This is where nanotechnology comes in. What we're doing at MIT and our team is leveraging an entirely new type of material, graphene. Its exceptional properties have been recognized by uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010. What graphene is, is the thinnest material known to man, but also the strongest material known to man as, as of yet. Thanks to nanopores in the structure of the filter, and thanks to clever chemistry and design, graphene is able to let water through while rejecting salt ions and other contaminants with faster flow rates, more production, and lower pressures than what's achievable today. In addition to that, graphene is resistant to harsh chemicals, which means the cleaning and upkeep of membranes is much easier than what's achievable today. So what does this actually mean? Does this mean good things for the operator, for the investor, for the RO plant itself? Uh, the benefits of graphene membranes can be thought of in three ways. The first is higher throughput. Graphene membranes allow for five times as much throughput uh, per unit area of the membrane. That means five times as much water is desalinated for any set of given capital costs or infrastructure that has already been invested. The second is reduced pressure levels. 15% lower pressure translates into lower energy costs and lower operational and maintenance costs. And the third is 20% more water, fresh water can be recovered from any uh, input of salt water, from, from the given input of salt water. That means lower pretreatment costs, lower brine disposal, and generally lower, lower costs for the plant itself. Um, regardless of how these benefits are realized to the operator, this does present a really attractive financial investment and promises to play some role in the global uh, solution to the water crisis. Um, so as we mentioned, we're a research team, uh, but we have looked ahead. We're looking at kind of the opportunities in the market that exist. We've identified food and beverage as an attractive beachhead industry. It's highly concentrated, it's growing, and it tends to be an early adopter. Uh, these companies spend a lot of money every year on filtration and membranes and are constantly looking for opportunities to reduce their energy and water expenditures. Uh, but before we get there, there are three things we are doing to reduce the technology risk associated with our product. The first is identifying methods for scalable graphene production. The second is uh, developing methods and process, parallel processes for creating these functionalized nanopores that are so intrinsic to these membranes. And the third is assessing and ensuring the mechanical and chemical stability of these membranes so that they are uh, feasible for long-term operation. Now, we're not here to ask for investment money quite yet. We're not at that stage. But to get to the next step, we do need you. What we're looking for today is for the mentorship and the strategic industrial partners who have the scale and the manufacturing know-how and the real-world experience to make this technology a reality. Thanks so much for your attention.